Hello, everybody. Happy Hump Day. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. And, oh, once again, we've got crazy fans projecting their childhood trauma onto others. In this case, it's mom shaming Tia defends stay-at-home nurse. So Tia just mentioned on her Instagram story that she's got a nurse she hires for three nights a week to get a little shut-eye. And, oh, boy, did this trigger the old world when I was your, you know, type of thing. So we're going to get into this story. Follow me on Instagram at dneal's Patreon com slash Dave Neal for behind the scenes bonus content. I'll be live streaming this morning. Join patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, Rush Hour, I got to tell you guys, we are receiving unprecedented numbers of downloads. Look at these stats here. In the last two days, we pretty much blew our daily average by 50%. So if you want to get on board, I'm giving you guys afternoon content that's slightly different than what you get here. Um, a little more freeform thinking up top. And also, you can get all of that by scanning this QR code. This QR code will take you to uh, my Patreon, my Pi, all these other things, and also ticket sales to my show with Katie Thurston, Stand Up Comedy. You don't want to miss it. February 15th, we had a couple Bachelor uh, fans come to our show last night. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. It was nice chatting with you last night. And of course, when you hit that QR code, it'll go right here to my link tree. You can get all that information. So before I talk about uh, Tia, Tia, Pia, Tia, uh, Tia here and her story. We're going to share screen grabs, what she said, how she was shamed and all that jazz. I just want to respond because sometimes it's easier to respond to comments uh, through uh, like the vocal medium rather than typing it out because I don't like to argue with people online. But the epic said this, I always treat everyone with respect. And this was in response to my Chris Harrison story. Uh, I don't expect everyone to agree on everything. And I'm using a different account to post this because there are too many crazies out there who go nuts at any opinion that differs from theirs, which kind of sounds like this person, uh, it, although he doesn't go crazy, he or she. I would subscribe to your channel and support you if your message wasn't so divisive at times. You really need to arm yourself with the facts before you make a political claim, which you do not. And no, I'm not a conservative because I've heard you call people who disagree with you that. This is just some feedback. Take it or leave it. One, People don't care about your political observations. I speak for a large group of people. We care about Bachelor News. Two, in a world that is already so divisive, do you really think you're adding any value? Yes. Three, my opinion changed a lot as I got older. I actually took the time to read bills and really understand the government and constitution. Opinions change and evolve. Consider yours will be on record and you can't undo it. I'm. So, is my opinion on record? <laughs> Is a YouTube video a record? I want to normalize changing of opinions so that people like you who might disagree with me could also have an open mind. Now, nothing about this content is even political. This is a problem people have with cultural issues is they make them political. Now, if someone wants to label themselves as an R or a D or a L or a uh, R, you know left or right, whatever, if someone wants to label themselves as that, that's fine. But my beef mainly exists in a classist system where we have the elites, the people that are donating to politicians, and setting the standards for what should be bills should be passed and not those are the people I have a problem with regardless of what political ideologies they have uh, this is just rubbish if you ask me uh, lastly consider the fact that the media and government are ex experts in brainwashing you live in a progressive state yet pay the highest taxes and it's the state with the highest amount of migration out if progressive policies worked why are people leaving at records so it's what a weird con I mean how am I? And he goes, feel free not to respond. You just asked me 17 different questions. And my only response was this, quote, I speak for a large group of people. There's your problem, bud. I speak for me and I talk about what I want and I'm not asking for feedback or why you decide not to follow. You're here. I'm here. It's all good. Very strange comment. Um, I don't hate the person for it, um, but it's a very strange comment on a, on a, on a recap of a Chris Harrison real that I made. But that's Instagram, folks. And speaking of Instagram, you know, people are people are losing their dang minds. Tia Booth defends hiring temporary help to care for newborn son a few nights a week. Stop freaking mom shaming, she says. So she just posts, uh, you know, three nights a week I hire someone. They basically take care of our baby on those three nights so I can get some shut eye. And of course, the responses are, no bueno. So she said, moms who have once been first time moms will say, do what's best for you and your family, then shame you and lose respect for you for needing help. We can only be praised when we're exhausted and doing it all alone. It's insanity. Okay, I'm done. Night, night. And then she also, she responded to this person. This person said, not trying to be mean. Oh boy. Oh, 
you know, uh, I don't mean to come off the wrong way. You already did, Nancy. You already, not to be me, not to be too judgy, not to project all of my issues onto you, some stranger online that I have a parasocial relationship with because I saw you kiss someone on a beach once. <laughs> not to be mean. But having a child is taking responsibility and bonding with your baby in the middle of the night when they wake, not hiring someone to do it for you so you can sleep. To me, that sounds like having a child means you should be exhausted all the time and, show, and, and, and share your trauma with your kid because you aren't able to get a good night's sleep. Oh, rubbish. Get out of here. All right, wrong button. Uh, <laughs> what did I want to play here? Hold on. Okay, there it is. Where's my rubbish button? I've lost my rubbish button. You guys don't realize this rubbish button comes from an, an interview I did with an Irish morning TV show where they called me rubbish. Here it is. That's rubbish, Dave. And this is rubbish. So Tia's response, like I said, it's a luxury to have help a few nights a week. Thanks for your opinion. And she said, got three more that weren't as friendly. It's a temporary service that helps us tremendously as first-time parents. I've learned so much from these nurses and will never look back and think, damn, I wish I would have been more sleep-deprived on those nights we had help. I'm able to be a better mom during the day when I can think and know my baby was so loved on and taken care of the night before. I don't have family here. Neither does Taylor. This is our help a few nights a week. Reminder to keep this to myself from now on. Now, don't keep it to yourself. Please share this. Now, obviously, she's got 1.3 million followers, so you're going to get a handful of probably uh, uh, potential psychopaths, sociopaths. I mean, look, I'm not a psychologist, and I'm not uh, going to pretend to uh, sort of armchair expert these commenters, but when you have 1.3 million people some are going to sneak into your DMs with horrible takes. Now, it must be tough, and I can't really relate, although, you know, I was raised in part by a single mom, so I do have a ton of empathy for 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 single moms, but also for moms that are, you know, trying to, like, she's she's a, an entrepreneur. She's an influencer. She makes her income, which doesn't go away because she had a kid, and that's got to be very challenging. Deliverables and, 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 and all the things that come with it, of course, in providing for her family. I was on a train once, um, I think commuting to New York. I was on the commuter train, probably Metro North, like one of those commuter trains that get very crowded. And there was a lady with a you know newborn, couple month old baby, and the baby was crying. I personally have zero issue when babies are crying, as long as the parent is trying to prevent that like if a kid's crying and kicking a seat and the mom's watching an ipad and not caring it's like well f you like at least give your kids some attention but the crazy part was the baby's crying everyone everyone feels for the mom because no one feels worse on that train car than the mom with the baby crying i'm telling you i would probably estimate someone who's listening to this right now it's probably like getting emotional thinking of an instance where you've been on a plane or you've had to deal with this yourself. Anyone who's had a kid or been near a kid who's crying and unruly or whatever knows it's a horrible situation. You feel bad, but like you wouldn't be taking the train unless you have to. You don't take the train because like, I'm going to bring my colicky kid on a train this morning. Oh, get out. You know, it's such a, it's such a unfortunate uh, thing, but there's always that mom or like former mom, older. So there's always some, someone in their forties, fifties, sixties, who's like, you need to, and, you know, in, in, and I know, I know they mean well, but in this instance, I saw another mom, mom shame, the mom who was trying to keep their kid. This is my acting out of the kid crying and just, shut up. And, uh, um, and it just got like, it, it wasn't shared with love. It was like, here's what you need to do to be a better mom. And so often you can see bonding happening more often than not. But in that instance, there was someone trying to shame someone else who was just trying to do their darndest. Now, maybe that's a poor example of the shaming. This is way more just advertent, but it's just like, really? Would you, like, I personally would rather my mom have slept a little bit more than be a single mom who works, you know, she, my mom worked in sales. So she was out doing, you know, on the road doing sales all the time. And, you know, like, I think there would be a better system set if we had some communal activity that helped others. I've thought about this. If we have a kid, I go, my whole family's in Rhode Island. My my wife's family's in Northern Kentucky. Like my sister's got four kids. My brother's got a child and a lot of family helping each other. That's the way it was supposed to be. We're supposed to live in small communities. The biggest fear I have if we do have a family on the West Coast is not having family to help out on those nights where you just need a break. So anyway, it was an article about it here. We don't need to go through the whole thing, but um, she took to social media, as it says, to share the message um, of what people are throwing at her. And you know, re regardless of if you're a millionaire or just getting by, uh, you know, the shaming of each other is just uh, futile at best. Um, anyway, so 
looked up a few articles. This there's a better way to parent than the nuclear family. Of course, nuclear family. We talk about like husband wife. You know, old school man's working all day, woman provides at home. This would I would assume drive moms crazy. You you have to think it'd be drive you crazy to be at home with your baby all day, not speaking adult words to adults, and and you know, having that full burden on yourself while the guy gets to go make a living again the old patriarchal way. It, it must be pretty nice to go to work and and live your day and be able to swing by a Dunkin' Donuts and what all the things that you get to do. So this this article that I found here, I won't read the whole thing for you, just kind of explained how like this isn't the way it's supposed to be when you're raising. Even if so, if you look at the photo here, it just kind of shows that in in old in old society that maybe lived on farms or grew up in tribal communities, there'd be plenty of other women and men to help uh, help you along. And now we live in the world where you just share all the highlights on your social media and then people don't even know when you need help. And it's not always just the two, three days you get back from, you know, from giving birth. There's so many other um, times when we need to be able to check on each other. The pressures and pace of modern life have made parents and children stressed and miserable. Again, this article was written six years ago. So this was, or eight years ago, this was written before the pandemic and all the other work at home things. With the rise of dual earning incomes, families, mothers, and increasingly fathers are struggling with work-life issues, forcing many to lean in or opt out. But is it truly modern life that's at fault or is it our expectation that two people, whether hetero or same sex, can do it alone and do it well? Is the nuclear family all it's cracked up to be? This is a nice question. Like, oh, wrong one. Where's my stupid... We may scrap this whole thing. Wrong button. Okay, we're having a wrong button day. Despite the belief that monogamous male-female bonding is how mothers and children were supported and thrived, the anthropologist Sarah Blaffer Hardy and others believe it was actually female cooperative breeding or alloparenting, sharing and caring derived from the pooled energy of a network of grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings, distantly related kin and non-kid that shaped our evolution. So it just goes to show it takes a tribe... And I would not want anyone in that tribe who was so willing to shame me for what I would try to do to make my family better. And look, I've been guilty in the past. I I can hide behind making jokes, but I've made jokes about Amanda Stanton when she was on, I think, Bachelor in Paradise or whatever she was on saying, oh boy, must be an expensive babysitter bill. And you know, it's all all tongue in cheek, but she, by going on the show and, and being separated from her kids for a few weeks here, same thing with Michael A, have created a world where they have the opportunity to hire a little help. They've created a world where they're actually able to provide. And in hindsight, it's like, yeah, I think leaving your three or four-year-old for a couple of weeks with grandma while you create a six-figure wealth, possibly more if you look at their, the, the net amount that someone like Amanda Stanton was able to make off of the show, then you go, all right, well, in the end, she kind of did what was right for her family. And that's all we can hope for. And we've talked about this before. I'm not going to dive into it because the video is already running long, but we've talked about postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis, and all the other things that exist through chemical issues that happen after giving birth. I can't imagine the highs and lows. There's obviously a difference from some some postpartum depression versus like just feeling uh, the postpartum blues, which, you know, different terms for depending on whatever spectrum you're on. Again, not a psychologist here, not, not my terms, but, you know, I do have family members that suffered from postpartum psychosis. It's a dangerous, dangerous thing. And although it wouldn't be solved by having your friends and family closer to help you, getting sleep, getting rest, and having people to relate to can for sure help what can be a very trying time, especially as a first-time mom. So Tia, if you're listening, we got your back. And I know I know it's it's part of what comes with the job is dealing with some of these commenters, but just know that the majority of the people uh, probably appreciate very much what you're doing and what you're sharing with others. All right, folks, more content coming your way. I'll be on Patreon at 10 a.m. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Link in the comment section if you want to buy tickets to my San Diego show, February 15th. Probably going to sell out. It will sell out. And maybe we'll have other show dates in other markets if you guys want it. So let me know, and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye.